White farmers must stay in South Africa, but I won't beg them. I won't be on my knees begging white farmers to stay in South Africa. Mm -mm. But they must stay. If they want to stay, they are more than welcome. Like all South Africans, there's nothing special about them. Nothing. To ask me about, do I see value in the white farmers in South Africa, is to ask me about white privilege. I'm not going to glorify it. I see value in all South Africans. White, black, Indian, colors. All of us, I value you. I want you to contribute in the growth of the economy. There's nothing special about white farmers. There's nothing special about white people. The sooner we do that away with that mentality, the better. I have no problem with white people at all. I have a problem with them being treated special. I have a problem with privilege. That's my problem. That when I say something, it's wrong. But when it gets to be said by a white person, it's right. I complained about Indians and how they are treating our people. The same way an Indian former constitutional court judge says, when it is said by an Indian judge, it's not a problem. When it is said because they've got a special place in heaven and we are all going to hell i have a problem with that i have a big problem with that that when things are said by certain people of a different color they are understood but when i say them or dali says them or any african says them they are said by an african child who comes from a poor family a child of a domestic worker who's he to tell us can be told by these people. So, no one is going to destroy any white farm. No white person is going to be uh, killed or beaten up under the EFF government. It will never happen. But, they will have to come down from the high horse and be here with us. What makes the hostility is the inability of our fellow white South Africans to reach out. They don't reach out. They actually create an impression that we are actually owing them an apology. Not the other way around. We are the... I, you, I've never met a, a white person who says, let's talk about, let's preach reconciliation. They don't preach reconciliation. The victims are the ones who are preaching reconciliation. Victims. Because who are begging. I'm not Sir Ramaphosa. I don't beg them. I'll never beg them. They are going to stay here if, if they agree to be equal to black people. And I can tell you, my brother, I hear your accent. South African whites, they don't fear war. They don't fear blood. They don't fear any land taken from them, they know it will never happen. They fear equality. Yeah. That's the only thing they are scared of. That they are going to be equal to monkeys. That's the only thing they fear. They know this Malema, they've listened to my talks. They know even when they reported me to Human Rights Commission, there's nothing hate about what these guys say. They know that. My crime is to demand an equality. That's a crime I'm committing in this country. To demand that the white minorities must come, from, must come down from their high horses and humble themselves and work with fellow South Africans. These Africans have got no problem with whites. Actually, they love them too much. <laughs> Some of them hate me because they think I hate white people. Or, hey, this one is going to make whites go. This one. They hate me for that. That's how much they love white people. They are prepared to sacrifice their own brother in protection of white people. That's how much they love. They have no problem with it. It is white people who have a problem with Africans. They do not see themselves being at the same level 
with Africans. And it's not only the white farmers, it's not the white managers in the, in the, in the newsrooms, it's not the white editors only. Go to the Supreme Court of Appeal in the judiciary. I sit in the JSC there. How the white judges in the Supreme Court of Appeal look down at their colleagues at the highest level of educated whites. Don't think it's just some a child of a farmer who has a problem with black people. Uh -uh. An educated white judge at the highest level has got a problem with an educated and over-educated African judge. When they write a judgment, they ridicule the judgments of Africans. When an African or a colored wants to make reference to the best reported uh, judgment of an African, they say, no, don't use that. Use this one. They give you an alternative white reported judgment at the highest, second highest court. That's how difficult it is. Our black brothers have got no problem with white people. White people have got problem with us. The, no one is good. No one here. And some of us were even privileged because with the money we are getting in parliament, we have taken our children to private schools. Because there is no public school here in South Africa. Schools have collapsed. They befriend white kids. They bring them there in our houses. When we slaughter, we must start slaughtering with these friends of our kids. Do you think our children are going to uh, allow that? We are building a completely new society where black and Africans are embracing one another. The problem is this old age. They have a big problem, those guys. Because they know the privilege of apartheid. The young ones don't know the privilege of apartheid. They know the privilege of being called a madam and a boss. And then calling older women girls and older men boys. They know that privilege. And today is no more. That's what offended them. So I'm not going to beg them to stay here. Not, I'm not begging anyone, especially white people. If they want to go, they can go. At least they've got somewhere to go. We don't have anywhere to go if things don't go right. We've got only here to go. So any white that says I'm going, you must know their loyalty is not with us because they've got two passports. They are not South Africans. They are half South African, half British. They can go. They must live quietly. Restart. Thank you.